in the upcoming sequence of lessons we are going to work on azure function from a python project using vs code for that azure account is the prerequisite ideally you should have one azure account to proceed with this lesson in case you don't have it in google you can search for create an azure account if you search you would get results from azure website which is azure.microsoft.com and there would be documentations like create your free account today or if i scroll down create your azure free account or pay as you go if you click on this link it would navigate to the registration page you can try this option try azure for free or you can select this pay as you go model if i click here then it would take me to the page where I have to start the registration process. In case you have an account, you can directly sign in. Otherwise, you have to create one account and then perform the sign in. And once you sign in, you would be redirected to the Azure sign up page. In the Azure sign up, you have to provide your first name, last name, phone number. And while you provide your phone number, there would be a process by which it would validate your phone number. Once you fill in all the details and click on next, there would be a section where you have to check the terms and condition and click on next. In the next page, you have to fill the credit card or debit card details for identity verification where you would be charged rupees 2 INR for verification. In case of US, the amount would be different, but whatever amount that is deducted from your account would be returned back as well within 24 hours. Once you provide all the details, a sign up button would appear where you need to click in. And if you perform sign up, you are done with creating the account. Next, you have to go to the Azure portal, which is portal.azure.com and perform the activities that are required. Now, going back to the original discussion, what we were having, once Azure account is created, first, we will install one Azure related extension in VS Code and create an Azure function project. After that, we will run this particular project locally in our system using VS Code. Once we run it successfully, we would perform the local debug of the same project from VS Code. Once we have run and debugged the project locally, we know that the function is working as expected. Using VS Code features, we would deploy this particular Azure function project to Azure Cloud. I hope this lesson would be useful. In case you find this lesson interesting, I would suggest you to go through the description page of this particular lesson. There, I would be adding a link which contains all my free and paid courses. You can have a look and in case you find them interesting, you can subscribe or contact with me if you need any discount coupons. That's all. Let's get started. In order to work with Azure Functions from VS Code, there are couple of prerequisites. First is, we need to have Azure Functions code tools installed in our system. That is one. And second is, we need to add one extension in VS Code, which is called Azure Functions. First, we will go for Azure Functions code tools and we would install that via Node.js and also we need .NET SDK installed. So first, I'll install .NET SDK. As of today, if we have .NET SDK 8, that is sufficient. Let me go to Google, search for install .NET SDK 8, clicking on the link available. So here we have the link for downloading .NET 8.0. If I scroll down, here we have Windows related options, selecting x64. Download has started. Download completed. Going to the folder. Let's start the installation. Double click on this. Click install. This installation may take a while. Once it is completed, I'll resume the recording. Clicking on close. Now we have .NET installed. We need to install Node.js as well. Searching for install Node.js. Clicking on the first link available in the search result. So here it is showing the version for long term support and OS is selected as Windows, which is fine for me. Scrolling down, clicking on this link, Windows installer .msi. Opening the folder, this is the .msi file, double clicking on it, click next, accept the license agreement, click on next, next again, next, next again, click on install. Now Node.js setup is also complete, clicking on finish, I am going to open the command prompt. Let me open the command prompt over here. Let me check the Node.js version, whether it got installed properly or not. Node-V. 
It is showing the version, so it seems Node.js is installed properly. I'm going to execute this following command to install Azure Functions code tool. Here, if you notice this hyphen G, it means the global installation. And the last option, double dash unsafe firm as true, it helps us in avoiding the permission related issues. The overall command is install hyphen G Azure Function code tools and red 4 means version 4 and then the parameter unsafe perm for permission as true. Pressing enter. This installation would take a while. Once it is complete, I'll resume the recording. Installation is complete. Going to VS Code now. Click extensions. Search for Azure Functions over here under extensions. Select this particular extension. This is from Microsoft. Click on install. It has started installation. Installation is complete. We can see this specific icon over here. Let me click. So here we can see there are different section. One is resources, workspace, accounts and tenants. And then we have help and feedback. First thing we need to do is to sign into Azure. If I click over here, there is a message. The extension Azure resources wants to sign in using Microsoft. Click on allow. So here you need to log into your Azure account following your specific way. I'm entering my credentials and logging into it. Now, once I log in, it is showing me this message. You are signed in now and can close this page. Closing this one. Now it is showing me my account. So I can sign into the tenant and directory. Let me try doing that. This is my default directory. Click allow. Closing the page again. So here I can see my subscription, the one which is available. And under this, there are different Azure resources. Let me minimize this workspace. So starting from AI Foundry, App Services, Function App, we have all the resources available here. Going under workspace, here we have the option to create Azure Function project. First, I'm going to open one folder, file, open folder. I'm naming this project as sample Azure Function Demo. Click on select folder, clicking on this Azure icon once again. Here we have the option to create Azure Function project. But apart from this, if we go to view and command palette, if I type Azure over here, there are equivalent commands or functionalities available. So here I can use Azure Function create new project. Similarly, similarly here also, if I just click on this create function project, it would provide me the options to create a new project. Let me click over here. So it's asking me to select the folder that will contain my Azure function project. I'm selecting the folder over here. Select a language, Python. There are two versions, model V2 and model V1. Select the second version. It's asking me to select a Python interpreter to create a virtual environment. In my system, Python 3.11 is installed. Let me select that. We need to select a template for project's first function. Selecting HTTP trigger putting the default name HTTP underscore trigger, pressing enter. There are three options. I'm just keeping it simple, making it anonymous. Press enter. It's creating the virtual environment as well as the project over here. It has started generating the code. I can see this function underscore app dot py. It has finished creating the project and it has opened the dot md file. If I go to explorer, I can see multiple things are created. All this are generated by VS Code. And here inside this MD file, various details are available. What this HTTP trigger does, usage of this template, how to run this, how to debug this, about programming model version 2. Various information is provided over here. Let me close this. I can see it is using Azure functions and for that the requirement.txt is also mentioned over here. We need to install this inside the virtual environment. But before that, I want to show you certain things. Inside this .vs code folder, VS code itself has generated multiple JSON files which are required for different purposes. Under extensions.json, it has mentioned what extensions are required. In launch.json, we have the configuration for debug. We have various settings available under settings.json. For certain predefined tasks, we have task.json. We are not going through the details of all these aspects. 
first i'll just focus on the code which is available over here what it is doing the main method or the entry point which is defined over here is the http underscore trigger so what it is trying to do over here there are certain logics present but at a very high level if i provide a query parameter called name then it would print it over here in the response we would get something like hello then the parameter value and then some remaining sentence like this http trigger function executed successfully that's the core logic at a very high level now first thing what i can do i can manually install this azure functions but in the task.json if i go over here we have this pip install already defined so we can skip that anyways first let me install the package you terminal this virtual environment which was created during project creation that is already selected pip install hyphen r requirements.txt now if i open this function app.py things are fine going back to the extension if i expand this i don't see anything over here let me click over here it is telling start debugging to update this list it's not showing the azure function over here the local one so what i can do i can just click over here to start the debugging or i can go here under run i can select this one start debugging anyways let me use this one as i told you whatever tasks are defined those would be executed so it's installing the requirement.txt waiting for pre-launch task now it is running in debug mode if i go through the message here we have the azure function url for the local system and if i go back here if i right click we can copy the function url let me copy the url open a browser this is the local url for this now i would add the name parameter so we are getting the response back let us debug this what i would do over here i would just place a breakpoint over here going back to the browser refresh this now vs code icon is blinking means our breakpoint is hit so the debugging is working if i just go to the next line by doing step over i can see the value that is passed so this is how we can locally debug the Azure function written in Python using VS Code. Clicking on continue. Now the browser has reloaded fully. If we don't need to debug it any further, we can just click on disconnect. So this is how we can set up our system to debug Python based Azure functions using VS Code. As of now, we have created a project using Azure function in Python using VS Code and we have performed the local debugging of this particular project. Now, we are going to deploy this project to Azure Cloud. For that, we need to go to this extension and here, if you notice, under workspace for this particular local project, this is the local project. If I click over here, we have the option to deploy to Azure or we can do a right click and select this deploy to Azure. But before we proceed with the deployment, we need to subscribe to certain resource providers. Let me show how. If I go to my Azure account in portal.azure.com and click on subscriptions, this is my subscription name. Let me click on this. Under this subscription, under settings, if I expand and if I scroll down, there is a section called resource providers. Here, I need to make sure that certain providers are registered. For example, if you see by default, it is showing certain providers for most of them. It is not registered for this one. This is registered while deploying Azure functions. There are there are three providers to which we need to register as of today. This may change or there could be some variation later on. But this is the current status as of now. The first one is if you type web over here, Microsoft.web. We need to register to this in case it is not in my case it was not registered so let me register this this is one another one if i type insights and filter over here this microsoft dot insights and microsoft dot operational insights both of them i need to register let me register this one first i think i mistakenly registered this security insight let me register this one and this one as well. If I go to notifications, 
this registrations are in progress this is for microsoft.insights this is microsoft.operational insights and this one is for web we need to wait for a while for this registrations to complete i can see this microsoft.web is already complete let's wait for some time more let me close this now all three of them are registered microsoft.insights microsoft.operational insights microsoft.web now going back to vs code over here do a right click on this particular project click on deploy to azure we need to select this option create new function app i need to provide a globally unique name let me try with the project name i have sample azure function demo pressing enter need to select a runtime stack let me select 3.11 let me choose a location over here whatever location we choose we need to have the necessary quota i'm selecting west us2 now it's trying to create the functional app sample azure function demo here we can see the message creating app service it's creating the storage account in location west us now we can see creation of function app is succeeded it's deploying to this particular app extracting the contents so deployment to this function app is also complete closing this notification let me refresh this and expand this one i can expand function app this is my azure function let me expand this further expand functions so this is my http underscore trigger right click copy the function url opening the browser pasting the url over here we can see we are getting the response from the azure function let me add a name parameter over here press enter so the azure function is taking our parameter and in the response it is adding over here so right now the azure function is deployed successfully from vs code now there are multiple ways to deploy the azure function but our main intention was to know how to do it from vs code once our task is done it's better to delete the resources one thing i can show you from here if I go to app services, let me close the notifications. This is the app service. If I click over here and scroll down, if I expand function, this is the name of the function. If I click on metrics, here it is showing the memory working set, function execution count, all of these details. If I don't need the function, I can select it and delete from here. But what I would suggest rather you go to home go to resource groups for a specific azure function it creates one resource group in this case it has created the resource group with this name sample azure function demo go inside this click on delete resource group copying the resource group name i need to provide it here click delete click delete again now it's deleting the resource group so whatever resources are used for creating this azure function app those would be deleted completely so now it has deleted the entire resource group so all the associated resources would be gone let me close this and click on app services or i can select it from here also there is no app services to display so the azure function is deleted entirely so this is how from vs code we can deploy the azure function project to the azure cloud